Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, part two of the Nissan Patrol gearbox rebuild. So all my parts have come, like my oil seals, new bearings, um, and the fifth gear and the main shaft. So I'll show you all that now. So let's crack on. Hi guys, so this is what's came. I ordered all this from um, Patrol Part Online. Let's go through all the parts. So I've got um, front and rear oil seals for the gearbox. They're all genuine Nissan because there wasn't that much difference in price wise to from the genuine to the pattern parts. I thought, well, with oil seals, best go with the genuine stuff. So we've got all new oil seals. We've got the Japanese genuine Koyo bearings for the thrust bearing because that the old one was all corroded. This is the um, the gearbox rebuild kit that you get. So it's got all the bearings, it's got all the needle roller bearings, it's got some oil seals as well. Um, like I say, all genuine Japanese bearings. Main one with the big chunky bearings in for the gearbox. We got all them. Then we've got the main shaft. And then in here is the main shaft. Got the main shaft. And Spacer and the fifth gear. So I thought they were all as one with the upgrade, but apparently not. The space is just slightly shorter than the one that's on there. So it's obviously a bit more meat. meat. As you can see, I have the main shaft out. And we've got the counter shaft and the reverse idler in there. Now, this bearing, I had a nightmare getting these bearings out. Well, that side came out pretty easy, but this one, get that out it was a pain in the arse it was rubbing up against these gears I dropped I took the bearings out of the counter shaft at the bottom to drop that and then let that drop to the bottom of the box which gave me room to play up here and then but the puller I tried to get it out this way but it was touching this gear here so I couldn't it wouldn't come out so in the end what I did that um, went full hardcore on it I basically cut the end of the main shaft off on this end just so as I could get my um, little 4 inch 100mm 
puller on it because I didn't have a long enough puller. I thought, well, I don't need the main shaft. So, and obviously when I put the bearings back in, I'll just um, hit them home with a drift with, with my um, tsunami. So, yeah, that's how I ended up getting that off because I just couldn't get it out for the life of me. If you have the, obviously, if you had all the right tools, you know, all the proper pullers and the bearing separators and anything like that, then piece of cake. But obviously I'm just doing it with the limited funds and limited tools that I've got. But needless to say, I've got it out, so she's out. Um, what I can start doing is I'll run a feeler gauge alongside the synchros up to the gears. Um, to see what wear is on them, but to be honest, looking at the gap, and there's plenty of grab on the end, they look pretty good. Um, like I say, I had no issues with it before. Looks like the way to go in, they sit. That sits in that notch. First job, line the synchro notches up with the holes, drop the keys in, which is that way, you say it was that way. Yep. Drop the keys in. That side 
a big bit at the top in there and this at the top and just drop these rings in what you've got to re what you've got to watch with these is when you put the other side when you do the opposite side the, the rings have to so when this one goes on with this gap there where the spring is on the other side make sure that the gap isn't at the same spot so we'll just we'll probably put it like that so gap at the top gaps now at the bottom so as long as we have the gap over this side <coughs> Simple key, oh, put the spring in, and just push them around so he's about equal. So, my about that. So, that's the reverse gear synchro up, and then that goes on. You can see, just let the keys in, you can see the teeth there. So we've got the synchro hub, the concave teeth go towards the synchro ring. I remember that was how it went on. So then that will go on to that shaft. Like so. Right guys, what's well, on here? This is the first gear, it's in pretty good nick. I'll just give it a clean up. It's just in a bucket with some degreaser. He's quite manky, so I'll just clean the um, synchro rings and um, the bolt rings. Got them all nicely clean. Alright guys, all I've just done here is I'm struggling to get this first and second gear synchro hub on. And I've managed to find a pipe and I give it a good tap. But what worked to treat is I just um, hit it with the heat gun for a while, like really, really nice and hot. And it pretty much just slipped on all the way, bar I had to just tap it with a pipe and I would just tap this down. Just enough so I could get the snap ring back in. I've got the snap ring back in now. I've just gone and cleaned up, degreased and then cleaned up and inspected all of the synchro rings, the bulk rings, and then I've cleaned the gear up. So that's first gear. So we've got reverse gear, first gear with the synchro locked the gear, and then we'll drop second gear on. Um, what you've got to watch with these as well is on the on this synchro hub there's a little groove on it and that must face away from first gear which as I laid it on the bench was how I put it back on it also mentions it in the manual as well
guys, same as before. I, put, I had to slip this sleeve on. Hit it with the heat gun, got it really hot. Slipped it over and then I basically put a pipe that just fits over there just nicely and just tapped it down and then it went on really nice and easy. So this is the reverse idle again. So I'd already pulled the keyway out for that one. So there we go, that's the shaft. That's the shaft for it. That's the reverse idle again. And then there's these two bearings in. Remember which way that went in. Cut to the right, so I think I'll degrease all the bottom of that. I couldn't get the old bearing off this input shaft and I ended up taking it to a manual transmission shop just about five minutes down the road from where I work. Ten bucks, you press this off and uh, press it, sorry, you pop the old one off and press the new one on um, taking about five minutes because I just hadn't got the puller or anything like that. So I've heated this up to expand this hole. This was cold, slip that on, that's all in there.
screws. I haven't put any um, gasket maker or anything on it yet. I've just placed it all on, go change that seal as well, just to check it all. <coughs> so, I'll go through the gears. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, down, reverse. Back into neutral. Awesome. We're all good. Pull it all back off and then we'll um, chuck the gasket maker on everything after that dry run. All good. Right guys, so I've pot pressed on the new um, clutch release bearing. <coughs> so this is the old one. They seem slightly different, but this is the one from Patrol Parts, a Japanese one. This one's got like an inner ring. Seems slightly bigger, but fits on. Um, I just use this bearing separator just to crack that off. And then um, heated this one up just a touch, nothing too, nothing too hard, hot. Um, and I just basically put this in the vise, like so. And then I put the old bearing on this side here, 
and just pressed it on. So that'll go on. That'll go on there. And then obviously you got the, the fork, which will slide onto these clips here. So that's the release bearing. All right, guys, that's it, all done. Um, I put the bar housing back on, transfer cases bolted back up. I put oil in the gearbox, I just need to top it up, but I ran, ran out of um, oil, so I need to pick up another tub of oil and then one for the um, transfer case. Um, I drained the transfer case, looking back, I didn't need to drain it, but yeah. So I put some new oil in that, top the gearbox back up. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, attempt to get it back in again. So same as before, I'll drag it underneath, pull the crane in through the passenger side and then winch it up. I'm not going to film it. Um, probably don't want to really see that. It was, I've already filmed the removal of it, so it's pretty much the same as that, but in reverse. Other than that, it didn't go too bad. I was quite happy. I've got, a good thing is I've got no spare parts. There's no um, nuts, washers, seals, or bolts, or anything like that left over. Everything that was on the bench that was taken off, it's gone back in. So that's always good when you, you know, you've not got stuff left over. Um, like I say, it's a bit daunting at times, not being a mechanic. Um, but I really want to have a go at it. I felt confident that I could do it. You know, I think if you've got a good mechanical understanding of how gearbox works, um, you know, you're sort of halfway there. And then obviously with the, I've got the, this was a, a godsend, the um, good old Haynes manual. It's got all the torque specs in and it's got the layout of everything. So if you did um, get some stuff mixed up, it's got everything in the correct sequence so it all goes back together so definitely recommend getting yourself a workshop book i'd also recommend a large bearing separator and possibly an hydraulic press if you can and a, and a couple of pullers like a two claw puller and a three claw, claw puller um but like i say i may do i managed to get it all it's all working perfect so we'll see how we go on the first test drive i'll probably run it for a few hundred k's and then I'll drop the oil out to see what I see because obviously all new bearings and stuff that will wear in a bit and I'll change the oil after a few hundred k's once it's run in. I think if you were doing it I recommend setting aside a good couple of hours on it. You don't want to keep coming back and to and froing with it because that's when you can sort of lose track of where you were. So it's always good just to get a good few hours of solid work on it. Um, so yeah, apologies for the lack of videos on that. I've been full full steam on this But hopefully she's all good now. So we'll uh, drop her back in and then I'll let you know progress On how it all goes once it's running. I'll give you a bit of a update on that So um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you got some ideas on if you're tackling having a go yourself or You feel like having a go But you're a little bit unsure whether you can tackle it. Hopefully, hopefully this gives you a good insight. If not, a bit of entertainment on um, how the gearboxes work and what what's involved in them. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching and we've had a good uh, good up of subscribers lately. So I've got quite a few subscribers come in recently, which is awesome. Almost at the 100 subscriber mark, which is um, out of this world absolutely amazing so thanks to everyone who's watching and subscribing really appreciate it i think it's really cool so um yeah please if you enjoyed the video like it um and subscribe also if you've got any questions about any of this or anything that i've done through the video just um, drop them in the comments below and i'll respond to everyone's comments and try to give you an idea whatever questions you've got cheers guys see you on another one